The last time I spoke to a group this size, which was probably double this size, um, was um, in November when I was speaking at the National Catholic Education Convention in um, Madrid, just outside Madrid, in Spain. And um, I spoke to 1,400 educators and leaders, and nobody can understand me. I hope that you will understand me. No, they did have simultaneous translation. Um, or you always look for a bit of a hook, I suppose, to introduce what you're going to say in days like this. And of course, up steps Christopher Pine to the plate, <laughs> and bowls us you know, a, a, perhaps a Yorker, if you continue the cricket metaphor. Um, I was fabulously misquoted in the uh, Australian Financial Review, as I had to explain to the bishop when he asked me, how come the liberal politicians are uh, ringing me up saying, what's your man doing? Uh, the quote was, um, the executive director of schools slams the other government. And it still doesn't believe me, but I didn't slam them. I expressed some concern about the approach that has been taken, that it was outlined by Minister Pine. And that's a good context for us to start. We didn't have no control over political agendas. They will come and they will go. They'll be good and they'll be bad. We can't let them detract from what we do. In the same way, we come back or late last year, certainly again early this year, because Minister Pine picked it up and used it as an example why we're going to change the um, national curriculum. Um, Australia is slipping further and further behind those great nations, even though Finland has slipped out of the top ten. But you know, you all know them. Two of them are cities, not nations, but three of them all, all reside in Asia. And the interesting thing is, they never say that our performance continues to improve. Overall, Australia's position is improving in relation to maths and, um, and uh, literacy. They are declining compared to those countries. However, does that mean we need to rush headlong into the approach that our minister and our minister has put before us? Well, we need to take account of that. We need to deal with that. Sue and her team will be vigorously um, uh, defending our proposition and asking for um, some understanding in the submissions that we put forth. But you know, it really is noise in the background. And if you need no better example than that, is what Jeff Masters had to say to us. Jeff Masters was very clear and very simple. It's about going to. And that's what we're here about. It's about going to. Alright? So that narrow focus and doing the things that we know and have known for so long that makes a difference. And that's what we're here for. We're here to continue on that journey. One of the things I've often had to defend when we talk about the work we're doing here in Parramatta, and it has been a road less travel in the education landscape, is that somehow this is an experiment, that we're doing some weird and wonderful things, usually distilled to the fact that we're just pulling walls out of classrooms. And that there's some new, weird experimentation going on. We will never experiment with the lives of the kids in our care. We would do them and our community such a disservice if we took that approach. And again, I ask you to reflect on not what I say and what we have been doing in our strategic direction over the last several years, but listen to the words of Jeff Masters and the work that they do, and the work that we all know that makes a difference. And it's backed by three things. It's backed by great research, great theory, and great evidence. We have around the walls here, and the infographics that, uh, infographics that you can see here, the, um, the performance data of what's happening in our schools. Can it get better? Of course it can get better. Are we on the right track? Yes, we're on the right track. Because we know we are continuously improving. We set ourselves that goal when we adopted the good to great methodology for quality improvement. 
and the data sets show that we are heading in the right direction. We are called as our Holy Father has said. We are not called to be perfect. We are called to answer an invitation to be better than we can be. And we can translate that in our education ministry very simply to be that we can be better at what we do because we do know what's work, what works and how it works and why it works. You know, our schools are full of potential saints. Our bishop keeps reminding us that he wants our schools to be saints for the world and in fact it's the, the title and the sort of late motif, if you like, of the paper that, that um, I prepared for you to read um, in relation to this um, talk. And it's no idle to pious hope it's a simple expression of the reality of what we can achieve when we set our minds to it. We can be very confident in this journey because we are not starting new and afresh in some other direction. As you know, and as the slide will show us there, we have been on this journey for some considerable time. We have built our capacity. We have learned together. We have used the research. We have used the theory. And we are using the evidence to continue to inform us about what we do and how we can do it better. We have been focusing now for some time on it's about good teaching. This time last year I stood here and told you that this is going to be about good teaching. We then worked together, our video clips have shown you, when working together that we are getting much more precise about what that good teaching means. When you take the road less traveled, when you go against the prevailing norm, when you go against centuries of entrenched practice, you know you are going to cause some disquiet and you know that you're going to have to learn how to do it differently. It is no magic that we can magic wand that we can wave over you to ensure that you are now well equipped. You will be better equipped by learning about how to do the work. And you know that's one of our mantras. We learn about the work by doing the work. And we have found that we need to step, step it up. When we've worked with people like Michael Fallon and when we reflect on the messages that have come through the Anne Clark lectures over you know, several years now, the recurrent theme is always about the good teaching. It's a point that I don't think Minister Pine, even though he says he values teachers, doesn't get. The wrong policy drivers will not influence change. And we need a concerted effort to work about this and then we need to learn how to do it. Um, the theme that comes across is that, right, we accept that it's a good teaching, and of course across our schools now, we've got that mantra in place. I know that you know it because I see it in operation and you see it in the performance data. But what we now know is that we need to step it up. So this year, we've adopted the, the, the um, mantra of going deeper. And I say so pleased to hear, and we didn't warn Jeff Mark more, what word Jeff masters up, but the message from his presentation was, it's going deep. So we're going broad and we're going deep. So what's that mean? The data tells us that we're moving in the right direction. If I just pick a couple of the highlights of the year, our HSC data has been absolutely outstanding and that plan results continue to improve. The bishops already mentioned participation in World Youth, um, in World Youth Day. Um, our schools are doing marvellous things. We've had international conferences, our schools developing new pathways into um, tertiary education and other opportunities. So that taking all that, we can be confident that we're on good ground as we move into going deeper. And how we're going to support each other in going deeper is to look at the work of John Hattie. John Hattie is going to be the text that we'll adopt this year. His Invisible Learning um, uh, book is an absolutely outstanding read. And can I tell you, at the risk of uh, 
um, not being superficial about it, is full of such eminent, practical common sense that our educators can read and say, well, I actually know that. But the, the challenge for us is not only knowing it, but it's in the doing. And you'll see that there are eight, you know, um, eight mind frames that um, we've got up around here that uh, John Hattie talks about that will help us go deeper. And I'm asking you to work with your communities around this text. It will serve as a touchstone for you and it will serve as a guide. If we just look here, a very simple one, the dialogue in our school communities should be around dialogue, not monologue. They should be around the main things that happen about making a difference. You think of the things that you could do or you should be doing in discussions in the times that you have when you come together. And it's around a dialogue, it's about building the story, it's about expanding the story, and it's about delivering that story into the very learning spaces for the kids in your care. Our system, strategic direction, has not changed. We have our overarching framework, we have four very clear intents and strategies that will be the touchstones. We will be asking ourselves the question of what happens in the classroom, where can we see it in one of those directions? And under each of those, there are two others. There are eight, and they are renewing form, uh, faith formation, precision in leading learning, building leadership capacity, building corporate knowledge capability, database integration, strategic resourcing, reimagining schooling, and reviewing our religious education. And we can locate the work of all our schools in those eight key areas. Every one of them are designed to add value and support you in your work. So I ask you to become familiar with those eight. And if you can't see that they're adding value to the work you're doing, let us know because that way we won't be able to go deep. We have the work of Lynn Sharrett with us last year. The faces on the data took us to a new level. Our understanding this of the data is going to get even more sophisticated. I have just been absolutely taken aback by the, um, the power of the, the data and the, the faces on the data having our schools. I suppose one of the highlights for me last year was being in a school on a weekend. We had some visitors who I'll refer to later came to the school. And um, it was on a Saturday afternoon and Father Fernando Montana happened to be at home in the presbytery and I just wanted to introduce him to these people. First thing he said, why don't you see our school? Took us over the school, we went in, had a look around the school at St Monica's, went into the staff room, and there was the data wall. And myself and my colleagues started to explain to the visitors what it meant. Father Montana took over his new centre, and Father Montana talked about the data wall. When you get that sort of capacity, when you get that sort of ownership, you can't help but go deeper. So we're going to build on that. So the faces of the data, and the issue now is not only the face of the data, it's what has happened to make the change in each and one of those beautiful potential saints whose photos are up on the wall. I really want you, and I ask and I put it this way deliberately, to commit to do two things this year. I want you to commit as a school community, number one, to deepen the sacramental life of your school. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. You will know what it means. But it can be from everything, from a prayer initiative, opportunities for reconciliation, a deeper relationship with a parish, whatever it is. Just do one thing. Across our agents that were associated with it, imagine if we all did one thing that increased 
the sacramental life of the Spirit. The second thing is that we make this commitment to what we have spoken about before. And let's make this work that every child, and we now start, rather than every child, talk about each in the course of our day, each child will experience one year's growth for the experience of being taught in that year. Every child. What I would like to be able to do when we stand up here next year with our vision, we put up the World Youth Day video. Imagine what we could do if we said, guess what's happened? The bishop has made it very clear, we've seen what can happen when the angelists have been the change is made. We know that we've got the talent in our schools. We know we've got the leaders who are capable of dealing with this. We know we have the refinement and we have the resource base behind us. There is no reason why we shouldn't aim to deliver on that. Originally, when I wrote the first draft, I had the word as an aspiration, but I've decided to say, let's lift the bar. Because it only reflects the journey we've been on. And that journey, uh, using things like good to great, shows us that we can deliver on it. We have now have, your, your bookshelves should be laden with great theory and good practice. We all have the dialogue about how we can do it and your work to, um, your work to do the very best you can in building the capacity of each and every one of your teachers. I met with the Director's Assistant Performance last meeting we had last year and I said to the Director's Assistant Performance, the forum, your key accountability in 2014 and your key focus is to work with the leaders of our schools to make sure they're well equipped to do the business of teaching our teachers how to do the job that they're doing. In that way you will then teach your teachers and we will learn collaboratively how to do better than we have done before. I think we're in for an absolutely wonderful year. While I said that I start the year positive, we always have a positive year. So we've got great enthusiasm, we've got great resources, we know where we're going, and we have the talent to do it. So I'm asking you to accept those, um, that challenge, and that we do deliver on it, and thank you for the great work you do. Just before I um, hand over to him, and I'm going to have a bit of a question or comment, um, there are two introductions I'd like to make, and I'd like just to formally welcome our two Spanish sisters, Sister Maria and Sister Teresa. Spain. There was only by happenstance they happened to be, it wasn't the reason I was in Spain, but um, uh, the sisters are looking to work in the diocese, and uh, Sister Teresa and Sister Mary, both principals of large schools in Spain, are here learning English rapidly. So hopefully in 2015, sometime in the future, we'll have the presence of the sisters of the Holy Family in Nazareth. You're very welcome, sisters. 